Yo, what's good, bro? Good morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know when you're watching this, but I hope you get some value out of it. So I was in the gym and I was thinking about this concept because I was listening to a podcast. They were talking about it. The three main fears for most people, there's the fear of success, the fear of failure, and then the one that plagued me my whole life, the fear of judgment, the fear of other people's opinions, bro. <laughs> there's a quote that I heard probably like six months ago, five, six months ago. And it was behind your biggest fears is where you'll find the most fulfillment behind your biggest fears is where you'll find the, the change that you've been looking for. The growth that you've been looking for behind your biggest fears is where you'll find that. And there's so much truth to it. I personally was always so fearful of the judgment with creating a YouTube channel, putting myself out there on social media, talking as if I'm putting, creating a coaching program, like these were always things that I was, I struggled so much with because I didn't want people to look at me and think like, oh, he thinks he knows everything. Oh, he's this way. Oh, he's too good for like, whatever. I didn't want people to be judging me. And as I reflect on it, really what I was afraid of was that people would see me the way that I saw myself. And that's a very interesting reflection because when I thought of it, about six months ago, when I, when I heard this and when I started actually like putting myself out there and really pushing myself, I was like, wow, what I was really afraid of was that I would be exposed as the fraud that I knew myself as. Isn't that interesting? It's, it's a projection that you place on other people that they would see you the way that you see yourself. And the way that I really overcame it, and this is the way that I overcame imposter syndrome as well. I had to prove it to myself every single day that I was the person that I wanted to be, not the person that I always knew myself to be. In the past, I always knew myself as someone who was undisciplined, someone who couldn't handle instant gratification, couldn't hold themselves to a standard or to the values and the morals and the things that I knew were right for me. I would always just do things that I thought people would look at and be like, oh, he's, he's like us. But I knew that a lot of those things weren't in alignment with who I wanted to be and what I truly respected, what I truly admired. So I had to take a big leap and just put myself in a position to be the person that I always knew I wanted to be. And since doing that, bro, since really taking this YouTube shit seriously, I've had so many YouTube channels, man. I had a YouTube channel when I was 14, 15. Actually, let's go even further. I had a YouTube channel when I was 12. I would record myself playing Call of Duty with like a Dazzle recorder. You can Google it, Dazzle. It, it recorded like standard RCA plugs, right? And I would play Call of Duty and I would make commentaries. And I hated my voice, so I would pitch down my voice because I thought it was too high. I thought people would hate to listen to it. That, that channel, and that was in what, 08? I might be, my math might be off. That was like 08, 09. <laughs> my channel got like a thousand subscribers. And at that time, a thousand subscribers is a lot for YouTube. And then even past that, I, I deleted that channel. I didn't, I, some people from my school found it. I was like, nah, 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 nah. Made a channel when I was 14 years old. I was in ninth grade and I, I would film myself playing League of Legends. And I had a YouTube channel. The, the first video I posted on that channel, I uploaded it to Reddit. Like I posted on Reddit and I woke up the next morning with 14,000 views on that first video I posted on. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I, I, I kept consistent with that channel for about two months. I, I got a partnership. I started making $200 a month just posting, posting League of Legends content. I still have those videos unlisted. And actually, you know what? I'll link. I'll link the one that, uh, that has 100K views. That video blew my, like my channel, I ended up with like 9,000, 8,000 subscribers, nearly 10,000 subscribers. And I quit because people in my school found out that I was making League of Legends videos. I felt like a nerd. I was too afraid of the judgment. I was making money in ninth grade off a video gaming channel. And I was too afraid of the judgment. So I quit years and years goes by. I want to be a producer and a rapper. I start posting and I, I would stay, I would try my best to stay away from Instagram because I didn't want people that I knew to figure it out, to find out that I was doing this, that I was rapping, that I was making music. Started making money off that too. A couple grand a month. Lost faith in myself. I was like, 
People are going to judge me for this shit, man. Stopped. I struggled with this so much. And now, here I am on YouTube posting every single day. I post on Instagram every single day. I talk on my story. People I know see it. (laughs) And this time around, the difference is that I've fully put in all the work necessary to prove to myself that I am worthy of whatever it is that I want. Every single day I wake up and I follow through on the things I told myself I was going to do. I go to the gym. I eat in alignment with my goals. I do everything that's on my list. I check it off. I get the W's every single day. When I miss, when I have an L, I reflect on it, reassess it, get back on the horse. And I do everything I knew I needed to do. And so now it's proven to me that I am the type of person that I always wanted to be. Back then, I saw myself as the nerd posting video game, like, videos. Back then, I saw myself as a guy who, you know, as a, as a rapper, as an artist, as a producer, you're supposed to be cool, right? I didn't see myself as cool. And I also didn't see myself as someone to look up to. People look up to artists and musicians. I didn't see myself as someone to look up to. Because I wouldn't look up to myself if I was an outside perspective. If I was an outside looking in viewer, right? But now I've put in the work, bro. And my whole goal is to become someone who I would listen to. And at this point, I can truly say that I am someone I would listen to. So if someone judges me for where I'm at, I don't worry about it anymore because I know know where I stand. Internally, I know where I stand with myself. And that's what's important, bro. It's the sphere of judgment is... Really a fear of yourself. And that sounds cheesy, but it really is a fear of the way that you see yourself and the fact that you know deep down that imposter syndrome is a, is, a, is a symptom of the fact that you know deep down you aren't putting in the work to be who you are trying to portray and therefore you are not, <laughs> you are an imposter. And the judgment that you're afraid of is that people will see you as that imposter that you see yourself as. So the way to overcome it (laughs) is to put in the effort, put in the effort to actually become someone who lives in alignment with what you want, what you're portraying yourself as. And what you'll find when you do that is that when you're living in alignment with the person that you portray yourself as, there's no more fear. There's no more dissonance between being this person and wanting to seem like this person. You're just this person. And that's so valuable. I just burped a little bit, bro. But having that, having that full alignment with what you know is right for yourself and what you actually want to be and actually being that, that takes away all the fear of judgment. Because then if anyone's judging you, guess what? You know that they're actually just portraying their insecurities. Because you know that they're, what they're judging about you is not actually like, it's not exposing anything because there's nothing to expose because you're so clear and transparent about who you are and not just clear and transparent to the, to the external people looking in, you're clear and transparent with yourself. There's nothing for you to hide from yourself anymore. You're not lying to yourself anymore. So now when I make these videos, when I post on Instagram, I've done the work. I've put in the effort to become someone who can speak in the way that I speak and talk in the way that I talk. Because if I, from let's let's say me a year ago, were to find me now on YouTube, on Instagram, talking the way that I talk, I would I would look at it as like a I would listen to it because I've me now has put in the effort to get from point A to point B, point B being here, but then there's point C and point D and point what? Like there's always progress to be made. And I'm not saying I'm perfect or I will ever be perfect. That's, that's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that now that I've put in the effort and I know that on a day-to-day basis, I am continuing to put in the effort. I don't have to worry about any form of judgment of like, oh, he's not who he says he is. I'm very transparent on here. I let you know when I fuck up. I let you know when I do well. And I let you know the reflections on both sides, the reflections that I have on both sides. 
And the point of that is to show the process and allow you to see the process. And then whatever you take from that process, whatever you learn from that process, it's up to you to decide how you want to apply those things. I'm just sharing the process. And that's how I overcame imposter syndrome, fear of judgment. I made it so that I don't have to worry about the judgment because the judgment is unwarranted. There's no... <laughs> I don't know if this sounds egotistical or like arrogant. There's nothing to judge. The things that I would have judged about myself in the past have been dealt with. The, the regret and the guilt and the shame and the disappointment, the anxiety, all of that has been dealt with. Because now I'm not, I'm living in full alignment and full congruence with my internal moral compass. I've talked about this before. Everything I do is in alignment with my internal moral compass. And I reflect on it regularly. So I know if, <laughs> if I want to do something I, and I know it might be out of alignment, I check myself and I say, is that out of alignment or is that just something I feel like doing right now? And I go from there. It's a base, but it's a, it's a like point by point progress basis. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a circumstantial thing. Every situation is different. It's interesting, man. I got into a flow state there. I don't even know what I just talked about, but I hope it helped you. I appreciate you watching the video. It's cold as fuck. Do you see the snow? Snow on my, what the fuck? Oh my God. I thought that was like a crack in my windshield. That terrified me, bro. That's a tree. We're good. No, no worries. Oh, that was fucking so terrifying. Yeah, it's snowing. It's snowing. I appreciate you watching the video. I hope it helped you. Take care.